Ladies and gentlemen, fellow avatars and metaverse citizens, good diurnal period wherever you are and whatever time zone you are in. And welcome to this presentation, Composing for the New Era, Teamwork and Collaboration Online, sponsored by Nonprofit Commons. In today's presentation, we will give models for teamwork and collaboration online for those participating in facilitating and forming teams. Participants will be able to diagnose where teams are working well or need work. The first part will be basics and pro tips. The second will be demonstrations. Definitions. A team is two or more people working on a common objective. For example, right now, look at the person sitting next to you and imagine I have just assigned the two of you to work together to learn something new today before the end of this presentation. You are a team of two. Team complexity is the number of possible person-to-person -person interactions within a team. For your two-person team, there is only one possible person-to-person -person interaction. Your team complexity is one. The more interactions that are possible, the more complex the team. For example, look at the person sitting on the other side of you and imagine I just added them to your team. For your three-person team, there are now three ways to interact. Your team complexity is three. Teams can be one-time or recurring. For example, when this presentation is over, your three-person team project is over as well. That is a one-time team. On the other hand, even when this presentation is over, the nonprofit commons will put on yet another next week, another the week after that, and so on. Production teams are an example of a recurring team. Teams that you sign up for are voluntary. Teams that you are assigned to are involuntary. For example, your current three-person team is involuntary. The models that we will present today apply to all these types of teams. Next slide. I'm at the top middle now. Team operations model. From an analytical point of view, a team may be considered as a box with arrows. The arrow on the left represents the inputs of the team, such as your members and your time. The arrow on the right represents the outputs of the team, such as your results and projects. The arrow on the top represents the controls on the team, such as your assignments and goals. The arrow on the bottom represents the supports of the team, such as the things that help you get your job done. Our job here today is to empower you to be one of those support arrows, no matter what team you are on or your role on that team. Effective teams have effective members. Each of you brings an individual investment to the team box based on what you already know how to do and whether you're willing to do it. Together, they make your net contribution to the team. 
Commitment is your level of dedication to the team objective. It is what you do. Competence is your level of proficiency in the role you play to achieve the team objective. It is what you know. This is a simple model and it goes like this. High competence times high commitment equals high effectiveness. Low competence times low commitment equals low effectiveness. If either is medium, the effectiveness is medium. If either is zero, the effectiveness is zero. Most of the time, individuals achieve medium effectiveness due to constraints on individual knowledge and time. However, anything above zero is a win. Pro tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what do you know how to do and are you willing to do it? Effective teams share roles. Your team brings a group investment to project success based on how well your members cover nine team roles. These include leading the team, idea generating, investigating parallel efforts, detailed specialist knowledge, steadfast implementing, filling in the gaps, ruthlessly tracking progress versus goal, fine detailing, and coordinating the team. This is a simple model and it goes like this. High coverage equals high success. Medium coverage equals medium success. Low coverage equals low success. Most of the time, groups achieve medium success due to one or more team role skills not being covered by a team member going in. However, anything above zero is a win. Pro tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what roles don't you know yet? And are you willing to learn them? Next slide. I'm at the top of the third placard. Effective teams use best practices. Best practices address how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is a divergent, expanding exercise where new ideas are generated. Deciding is a convergent, narrowing exercise where choices are made and action begins. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are decided before an event begins. Debriefing is an expanding exercise where members reflect on what happened at an event after it is over. This is a simple model and it goes like this. Either you talk to make things more open or you talk to make things more closed. Both are needed. Throughout a project, your team will cycle between divergent and convergent communication. Both are needed. Pro tip. The question is, for each event and conversation, what mode are you in now? And when is it time to switch?
effective teams develop in stages. Stages address how you and your team evolve through time. Forming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. Norming is where you get used to each other and agree on a plan. Performing is where you crank out results. Throughout a project, your team will cycle back and forth between these stages. For example, learning new things about each other, experiencing changes in circumstances or team members, or making necessary changes in plans. You will be adapting, improvising, and adjusting even up to the last minute. Pro tip. The question is, for changes experienced, is it okay to proceed per plan, or does something different need to be done about it now? Effective teams evolve. Right now, you are in a team project called Nonprofit Commons, 14th of January, 2022. When this team project is over, you will certainly go on to another. In fact, you're already in many other teams at this very moment, your family, friends, other activities, and work. Each time you participate in a team going through forming, storming, norming, performing, you have the opportunity to experience a growth cycle. You are listening to what is being asked of you. You are choosing how you're going to participate. You're acting on your choices. You're advancing based on your results and extending your personal abilities to make things happen. Pro tip. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next? Okay, that's the first part, guys. I'm going to ask my volunteers to come up to the front seats now for our second part, demonstration, debriefing, a team. This will be John O'Connor, Magua, also known as Builder, and Wisdom Seeker. Have a seat, guys. How about a round of applause for these brave souls, guys? And Builder, there's a seat right next to John. I think if you right click, or I think you just left click it, you'll sit. <laughs> John is nervous. There we go. So for this part, uh, for the audience, this debrief will be in voice. The prompts will be in text, and I will attempt to transcribe the team's responses in text. So that's the game plan. Thank you, audience, for your time and attention so far. We're now going to do a live demonstration of debriefing. These three volunteers, there is a seat for the fourth volunteer. She's unable to be with us. Tuya is a major part of the team, and due to exigent circumstances, she's being here in spirit, if not avatar. But we are remembering her in our comments today. 
these volunteers have agreed to share their reflections working on the 2021 virtual environments course overlap project what's that you may ask that's what ended up in the international student project that many of you attended over the last couple weeks but it was really called the 2021 virtual environments course overlap project at the beginning which began july 2021 and completed december 2021 we will use prompt questions based on material presented today and builder i'm going to ask you first since you're the first one sitting next to me whoops so the first thing we're going to talk about is team stages and the scope of this for the audience is our volunteers are going to talk about what it was like to work with each other as adults we're not talking about their students because they all worked with students. They're walking each other as team members. And a quick reminder, the four stages are forming, storming, norming, and performing. So Magua, back then over those six months, what did you notice about forming, storming, norming, and performing with John and Wisdom? And I will attempt to type briefly whatever you comes to mind. I'm happy to I'm happy to start. So I, I think um, it's a really interesting question because we we all knew each other a little bit, but we hadn't really worked very closely. So I had been chatting occasionally to uh, Magua, and we met occasionally at various uh, shows and conferences and talks. And wisdom had been um, over the previous two years or so, a regular uh, host for my students and my program um, at um, Whole Brain Health. But we hadn't worked any closer than that. And we came up with the idea of all three of us coming together to build on what we had been doing over the last few years in terms of uh, teaching our students, um, but somewhat recklessly, perhaps, just bringing it all together and hoping um, that any of the differences would get ironed out along the way. So the interesting thing always when, when people come together like that is you, you spend the first few meetings sizing each other up and, and doing, I suppose, informally or um, uh, unconsciously what Sightarm described very, um, very accurately is you're attempting not only to suss out what your own experience is and what your own abilities are, but what the abilities and experience of your colleagues are and whether or not you can rely on them to deliver on what they say they'll deliver and whether or not you can rely on yourself to deliver what you've committed to delivering. So that kind of forming process goes on throughout the, the, the entire period. Um, good. No, that's I good. Think... That's good. Okay. Now let me add the next kicker, if I may. Same stick with you, John. What did you not notice back then that you now see about the stages? I have to admit, uh, and I've sat through your lecture site arm um, for about ten years. I've twice a year I've sat in on that lecture as you've given it to my students, and yet. I didn't realize that we were a team when we started. And in fact, for I'd say for the first two or three months, I didn't realize that we were forming our own team. I, it's amazing what you don't see that's in front of your nose. I just assumed we were working in the normal way and I, I didn't bring any of the theories to bear uh, that I had been listening to for some time. And with hindsight, it would have made things a lot easier if I had been aware of that and had moved on a, in a more conscious way. Thank you. Uh, Wisdom, do you want to add anything what you saw back then or see now about the stages of a team? Well, I think back when we started, uh, it was it was a little more compli complicated because Magua and I had already formed a team for the previous semester with his students and my whole brain health team. 
So I have, I'm one of five people on our team and he had two students working with him and we had already kind of forged, we had kind of gone through some of this already. So adding John and you in to uh, this was at the time, um, we didn't again think about it in terms of what that would be like when you've got people who've been working together and then a new person comes in. And as you, as John said, John and I had a relationship. I had a relationship with you and a different one with Magua. So looking back now, I'm, I'm amazed that we did as well as we did. <laughs> considering <laughs> that we were really trying to do a lot at one time for a very short period of time too, because between July and when we started in the fall, we had very little time to organize ourselves. Thank you. Good. I'm going to move on again. Uh, Builder, do you want to check if you have voice now and then you can do the next one? I think so. Okay, Is that good. working now? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to the next prompt. So listen, listen tight. Okay. We're going to talk about team roles, the role on a team. Uh, maybe I should mention, John mentioned he had not realized that you three were a team. And Wisdom said it got more complex when we combined two separate teams into one team. So that's just background. So just a quick reminder for the audience and the panel, the, the, these are the nine official team roles according to research. And Magua, regarding who is doing what on the team of you and John and Wisdom and Tuya, what did you notice back then during the six months about roles? Um, okay, like uh, from the previous experience, because I, I work with uh, Wisdom and uh, her team, which is Tuya is one of them. And so I knew what they were doing with me. So I had a kind of more clear vision of what, what their roles will be as well. But then um, with John, it was the first time I was going to work with. And um, I mean, I, I've done before in the face-to-face -face environments, teaching with other uh, professors, like team teaching uh, activities or Sometimes we combine courses with with my other colleagues and other stuff, but then that was a whole course together and it was in virtual world. So it was kind of a question mark, like, and I never worked with the Irish as well, but he's, he's the first Irish uh, that I work with, honestly. So, and um, cool. all those, you know, counting and all those things, the unknowns about the uh, culture, about the uh, environment here, how, how, how are we going to manage all those 30 students in our course and everything else? That was quite tricky. But um, let me ask the another... second, second part of the prompt. So you can, I want you to keep going. You're doing great. So okay. what did you not notice back then that you now see? Because what do you now see about roles on the team working with John and Wisdom and Tuya? I did not notice that you were going to be part of the team as well. Got it. I thought you were you were going to be a um, you know going to be with us in one two lectures at all, but then you you really take the initiative and then you you were becoming one of us. So the team expanded in reality. Uh, that what was in my mind was more limited. Now we have a larger team. Even not only you, the Val is part of the team now right now or uh, the Galen is uh, part of the team right now, or uh, Gentle is part of the team right now. I consider them as part of the whole uh, project. Uh, and they are also the team members, in my opinion. Yes. So the whole, the whole um, team concept kind of expanded. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the next prompt. That was perfect, guys. You're doing great, by the way. Let's give them another round because they're doing a live debrief, guys. These are not rehearsed <laughs> what they're saying. <laughs> it's easier to debrief in private. Yes, thank you. Okay, good. All right, now we'll do the next prompt. Okay. 
so the next prompt is on uh, team uh, dialogue. And as a reminder, dialogue is things like brainstorming, deciding, briefing, debriefing, and opening things up and narrowing things down. So, um, uh, John, let's start with you again. What did you notice back then the, during the six months about dialogue with your fellow team members? I think the key thing I noticed um, is all of the individual experience we've had in our professional lives so far came came into play and came to the fore. So although we may not have been formal in the kinds of discussions we had, we were able to anticipate what was needed. And I think we also took prompts from each other. So we had some very, very good uh, brainstorming sessions in July and August where we were planning what we were going to do. And they went all over the place. Um, and then as we needed to make decisions, one of us would pick up on the fact that it was time to make a decision and we kind of encourage the others into uh, a, a narrower um, decision making frame of mind. And we all interplayed, I think, and, and switched roles on that and did it as we either saw the necessity for it or as it as the necessity arose. Thank you. And then uh, continuing the prompt, which you now know, what did you not notice back then about dialogue that you now see? Well, I didn't notice what I've just described, but the, the other thing I didn't notice was that as things progressed, um, I think there was a reluctance on any of us to take on a leadership role, not because we were reluctant to lead, but because we were um, conscious that we were all leaders in our own areas. And I, I'm not sure that any of us wanted to presume on the others. Um, one of the things that did happen was that you called a number of meetings, which after a while, I think it began to dawn on us that you had slipped into that leadership role in terms of ensuring that we met to make decisions in good time. Um, and if I were going again at this, I would be a lot more conscious of having discussions on the team about ensuring that we had a leadership position for e either for each meeting or when we needed it. I think that would have helped us be a little bit more efficient. Okay, thank you. Um... And then this is the fourth prompt, and this is for all three of you, but Wisdom, I'm going to start with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the evolution of a team, the evolution of a team. So Wisdom, what can you use going forward now, looking over the last seven months of the project and the, what can you use going forward? In terms of this group, correct? In terms of the and you're in anything it's open it's an open question okay well i would say two different things one is with my own team uh, integrating my own team and listening to my own team and making sure that i represent my own team in the larger in this in this other team is is very important so i'm making um, much more of an effort to be sure i consult with my team before pushing them into something, making decisions for them. Uh, and that's that's pretty important. And uh, I think in terms of the <laughs> in terms of the this the ISP going forward, uh, being talking together, I think, first of all, I think it's easier for us now to talk together and plan together than it was last July. And to be able to uh, plan ahead a little more than we did last July will be helpful. And to have a, a, a designated leader and have us interact perhaps with that leader so that we're not all interacting with each other in ways that may actually confuse what's happening, what's going on and creating role, um, perhaps um, crossing roles, crossing boundaries in a way, in a way that does not work well. Got it. Uh, 
Uh, Magua, how about you? What can you use going forward from the last seven months? Open question. It, what can you use? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, like uh, like the like in your slides, there is this um, uh, cycle that we go through each teamwork. Um, so um, now now we know better each other. So now we know. Uh, what to expect from each other in a more realistic way. And uh, we, 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 we have seen this picture before. So this is, this is kind of uh, going to be, and we have an experience on the back uh, of our head that, okay, like we did that and it was complex. In my opinion, I didn't imagine this, uh, it would be that complex. We had to meet many times. We had to uh, manage not only the team here uh, together or the operation together here uh, we had our students to manage we had our own team i had uh, I, I was working with a couple of assistants uh, on the background uh, during the whole term uh, wisdom has uh, her own uh, team of volunteers uh, on her uh, on her back shoulders so it's like uh, site was uh, so, sorry john was with you site uh, kind of you were you were uh, you worked together before and you kind of a, a inner team inside the big team so all those teams together worked in harmony i mean uh, yes maybe we could have done certain things better but i think it really worked well the whole thing uh, and it's it, it's beyond my expectations. Uh, when we talk to each other, we all uh, uh, you know expected uh, we would have more problems probably. But then it, it was quite smooth compared to uh, what we imagined. So uh, we just need to do all we need to do is right now to redo it with new set of students. Maybe new characters will get into the play. Maybe some other things will uh, pop up during the processes and maybe we will add new uh, ad additional content to this course in time uh, but uh, at the end of the day uh, we know that we are all going to be fine i guess i, I think I, we feel more secure now and uh, that is uh, one of the things uh, i think a positive thing uh, for the future thank you Thank you very much. Um, I, I, would, I hate to be a systems analyst for just a minute, but what you just said so rang with me. Basically, you had, if you had a team of two, like John and I were, which has a complexity of one, and then you and Wisdom and Tuya had a team of three, which has a complexity of three, can anybody tell me what is the team complexity of a five-member team That's right, it's 10, because there are 10 possible interactions between five team members. So we didn't just double the complexity, Magua, we, we more than tripled it. Uh, yeah, it goes, oh God, I'm such a system, it goes as N squared for values of N large enough, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we are done. Yes, Corin, you can type that equation in if you wish. We are now going, and guys, just stay up there and relax because you're off, off the hook now. We're going to do a very quick debrief because I promised Rihanna that we'd be over a few minutes before the top of the hour. So we are now going to demonstrate with your help, audience, in text chat, a debriefing of an audience. So the first question... Thank you, thank you. Please refer to the notes, if any, that you took during the presentation or what you have in mind right now and respond in text chat. And I will read out a few selected text comments, um, but we will have a chat log. So the prompt is, in this presentation and this demonstration so far, what has caught your attention? And Val, I just know you have something to type because I can see you typing. Yeah. And Shurkin, I'm okay. Okay, we're not doing Q and A, Shurkin. We're doing what has caught your attention. So I'm gonna interpret 
what Shurkin, Shurkin wants some recommendations and he's worked with teams before yeah, that's okay so what has caught your attention I may pick a few of you out to start typing so inquisitive loon could you type something out gentle heron could you type something out LV could you type something out AJ could you type something out what has caught your attention and if you want the rest of the prompt just so you know it's going to be what can you use going forward uh, Corin has not yet typed the formula for the number of team complexity come on Corin Okay, uh, LV likes the relationship between competence and commitment and how they combine to form your effectiveness. Rhiannon likes the iterative process of teams working through time. Thinker likes that people learned from the meetings. Exe says norming is caught his attention. Thank you, Corin, for the formula. There is the formula, you guys. AJ says food is important to her. <laughs> and Xyz is a her, so they said. Uh, Lear says collaborating with others to create cool things. See, now we just formed, Xy. Now I formed and learned that you're a her. Okay, who else can I pick on? Uh, so, AJ, the question is, if uh, what can you carry forward from today? Uh, Marley is taking the team role list into her experiential model. Thank you. Um, Lear says that we just had a bit of storming, me and Exy. Puki uh, notes that everyone offers their own unique perspective. Uh, Gentle says what we learned today relates to uh, board functions on recruiting nonprofit board members. All right, uh, Mal, you're, I invite you to type something if you're present. I know you, I see your cat. Who else can I pick on? Uh, Zinnia, would you like to say something? Buffy, would you like to say something? Um, I see people, I'm looking, uh, Olive Tree is typing something. Val is still typing. Buffy says, thinking about the complexity of teams and how dynamics play a huge part. Thank you. Uh, Marley adds, the difference between teamwork and virtual as versus being in the room. Ava is typing something, I think. OK, good. With that, we're going to move on to the last and final demonstration, and I appreciate all your comments. Val says, thinking about teams abstractly. Uh, Olive says, uh, the, the group sometimes makes a team and sometimes it doesn't. And Ava is thinking about increasing complexity slowly, adding a person uh, to a team. Thank you. So we are moving on. Feel free to keep typing those because we will keep the chat log. But the next and final demonstration is time check. So uh, demonstration, music for teamwork and collaboration online. So in honor of you guys today, I composed two very short impromptus. And by short, I mean less than 20 seconds a piece. They are brief musical expressions of what it might feel like for a beginner versus an advanced team member or facilitator. Because remember, be a facilitator as well as a team member who's going through the four stages of forming, storming, norming, and performing. So how this works is I'm going to give you a YouTube link. And then on the countdown, 
Now only do the YouTube link if you know that you can open YouTube in your external browser and not crash your system. If you do not feel comfortable, don't do it then. Okay. So here is the link and on the count of three, two, one, click the link, watch that, come back and type uh, B for back. Ready, set, go. Okay, I am back. John is back. I'll wait for a few more B's. Okay, Thinker's back. Lori's back. Good. Uh, and for those that had a chance to look at it, um, I love looking at music in terms of a musical score, and you may or may not have noticed that on the bottom it actually labeled forming, storming, norming, and performing. And I'll be happy to define driftance separately, gentle. And I'm delighted you asked. Here is the second piece. This is Team Stages Advanced. Again, it's less than 20 seconds. Same ground rules. I'll give you the countdown. Go watch it. Come back and type B when you're back. Ready, set, go. Okay, John is back. I'm back. You all are back. LV's back. Thinker's back. Wisdom's back. So, um, what I'll simply point about point out about that score is you'll notice that there were two melodies. Uh, they both had forming, storming, norming, performing. But what I love about this one for the advanced practitioner is it goes more quickly, and you may have noticed that the bottom line started storming before the top line was done forming. So you can interpret that how you want. Perhaps you recognize that we're transitioning and crossing over into the stages, or perhaps this person is on two teams at the same time. So um, that's why it's music, because I'm trying to say things that it's stupid to say in words, but I just try to do it anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and attention to this presentation. For those that wish to have it, here is a link to the slides with selected references. So you can go read up if you want to on where did those nine team roles come from, etc. And I love that you guys are talking about the music. So that concludes our presentation. We're all going to stand down now and take a bow, team and audience. And I will go off mic and turn it back over to Rhiannon.